morning everybody. Mary here from Rocky Mountain Gardens and welcome if you are new to my channel as well as my old subscribers. So happy to see you today. Uh, I'm up the early this morning because I'm doing a brunch with ladies from my church and so I've got to get going here shortly but I wanted to share with you today a sort of a procedure maybe you could say about how I take care of my house plants during the winter time and some of the chores that I do it's sort of an annual time of year for me to really focus on them after the busy holiday season and so uh, let's get started and I'll take you through a couple of the things that I do in the month of February. One of the chores that I like to do in January is to clean up my plants. As with this peace lily, I have some dead blooms and I also have some leaves that have died, such as this one here. Now, plants can live for very many years. However, they do have individual leaves that die. And to clean up your plant, make it look nicer, and also avoid your plant trying to uh, send any energy to a dead leaf rather than focusing on your leaves that are still healthy and alive, so, like this one here. Um, <clears throat> it's best to clean up your plants, take the time, which I do after Christmas, and I have more time for this chore. So we're just gonna go around, cut off these dead blooms and any dead leaves. My peace lily will look much prettier without these brown leaves on it, and it will be healthier for the plant as well. And by the way, you might notice that I have some browning on the tips, especially of my leaves in my house as we go around and do this chore. And that is because I live in an arid climate. It is very dry here in Colorado, and that's hard on your plants, your indoor plants. So it's something I just live with, with my plants, and we do the best we can. I believe I've gotten all of the dead leaves out of this bushy peace lily and it looks better. It is starting to droop a bit. And just a quick tip, uh, peace lilies really do let you know when they need a drink of water because their leaves begin to droop. And this one is just beginning that. So we want to give it a nice drink of water to keep it healthy and looking just as luscious and pretty as it does. Next here in my bathroom, I have this skin baptist. It is a, a satin, I believe, white satin is the variety, but as you can see, it has some yellowing leaves and some dying leaves. So we're going to remove them from the plant. Sometimes you can just snap the leaves off when they're dying and looking bad. This one, oh, it just popped right off. That means it's ready to go. And this Scandaptus is getting a little bit tangled up, isn't it? The way it's growing. So we wanna fix that and help it out here. It's getting a little bit leggy, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim this plant quite a bit. I get this whole stem off, and I can propagate this by just placing it in water and get another plant from it. Next, I have this rattlesnake calathea, which tends to get crispiness on its leaf ends despite the fact that I have it here in my bathroom which is a 
more humid part of my home. But back in here, we have some leaves that are in bad shape. And I'm gonna go ahead and snip that off. You can see it's looking very bad. Now, one rule of thumb for removing dying leaves is if one half of the leaf is still alive, uh, the wisdom about house plants is that you can leave it on your plant because it is still producing and photosynthesizing with the half of the leaf that is still alive. But when it is as far gone as this one, you don't want uh, your plant's energy going to the dying leaf. You want it going to the healthy leaves and producing more leaves for your plants. So cutting away a dead or dying leaf that is this bad is a good thing, like I said earlier. Plus it also gives you a chance to make your plant look more pretty, more healthy. and just a nice house plant for your collection. So we just turn our plant around and inspect it, especially in the center here, for any dead parts that we want to remove. This also helps to keep disease from spreading in your plant. Part of my winter chores for my house plants includes doing some repotting. Now, the winter is not the optimal time to repot plants, but it is the time that of the year that I actually can fit it into my schedule. I have been so busy between decorating and flipping projects, and before we know it, it's going to be time to clean up my outdoor garden and get ready for spring. Now over here you can see a new bag of my Fertilone potting soil. And this particular potting soil is a little pricey. It actually cost me $20 for this bag. That sounds crazy, I know. But you also know how prices have been rising. It's called the Ultimate Potting Mix and I really recommend it if you have trouble with fungus gnats because this soil is sterilized. Therefore, there are no fungus gnat larvae left in the soil to cause trouble later. And I have found it really helps with the control of that problem. So I do recommend this Fertilone. Now, I have several plants I'm going to be repotting. We're gonna get started on that. For example, these are little cuttings that I made from this weirdly shaped aloe vera here. It actually got knocked off the shelf and I had to cut off quite a few leaves right in here, as you can see. But in any case, I am going to try to save these little babies starting to grow, remove this part and add this to the pot. And we're going to start over again. And then I have a few others that we'll talk about that we're going to repot. And I have cleaned up my pots with hot soap and water to remove any germs, anything that might harm my new plant that I'm putting in the pot. So yes, you can reuse pots as long as you sterilize them well and get them ready for your next planting. Okay, so let's plant.
next I have this very sad African violet that needs to be trimmed up and repotted. So we're going to trim off the old blooms and clean off any dead leaves. Before we pot it, we'll get this all done and it will look like a new plant in a nice, pretty pot. I have prepared the new pot by making a well of soil in it so that the old root ball can fit. This poor guy is really in bad shape. I really did neglect him for quite a while, but I do believe he will recover because that's how plants are. They really want to live. And so if you give them half a chance, they can still make it no matter how uh, damaged or uh, sad they are. This one right here doesn't look so healthy, so I'm going to go ahead and remove it. Because African violet leaves are fuzzy, I'm going to use a brush to get the soil that is sticking onto these leaves. Just brush it off and then the leaves will be able to breathe and photosynthesize as they should. They won't be covered with soil. This will give the plant a better chance to grow and do well. So that's a little trick that you can use if you're repotting and get soil on the leaves, just get an old paintbrush for a tool to clean them off. And do that before you water it, because of course water will make the soil stick to the leaves more. Now, doesn't that look so much better? And let's see it thrive. Our last plant is this purple heart. It's not very purplish right now, with the leaves because of the low sunlight that we have in winter. But when I put it outside next summer, it will really become gloriously purple. But right now it has overgrown the pot it's in, so we have to take off all the dead growth. And then we'll start our repotting in a larger pot. And I'm also going to cut it back quite a bit. Because with Tradescantias, if you don't want a vining plant, but you'd rather it be more bushy, just keep those vines cut back. And then you will be able to create a bushier plant. So our plant is cleaned up. Now it's time to repot. And we're going to use this larger nursery pot for it. We'll begin by putting some soil into the pot. Because this is a rather deep pot, I'm going to make my well deeper down into this new planting container so that it can fit down in there. And now we're gonna to try to release it from this pot, squeezing on the pot can loosen it up very well. And then we're gonna turn it upside down, give it a couple taps and out it comes with some gorgeous roots there. But it does need to be uh, loosened up here with the roots to make sure that they don't continue to grow in a circle in the new pot. So we just set it down into this new pot, which will handle the size of this plant quite well. We're gonna add more soil and tuck it down. 
into the sides to give those roots and the whole plant good support. Now we're going to water it uh, quite well and also uh, give it a chance to recover. Right now the stems are drooping because they're in shock because of the transplant, but they will recover with some water and some sunlight and start standing up straight again. And then they will be a happy plant in my collection. I have my ZZ plant here so I can share with you one last tip. And that is to aerate your soil in your house plants. Now, one of the easiest ways that I have found is to take wooden chopsticks or, you know, use one of them and um, they're wooden so they're nice for working with your plants. And aeration, well, what happens with house plants is that over time when you're watering it, the soil gets compacted down <clears throat> very tightly around the roots. In you want to help out the roots in their ability to breathe and to grow by just pushing your chopstick or anything. It could be a pencil that you might use. So um, you just take it in and simply wiggle it around a little bit as you push it down into the soil. And this is gonna allow your roots to breathe better and if you do this like I am in January, once, once a year, it will be really helpful for your plants to remain healthy and have nice, strong roots to keep your plant growing. So I hope this quick little video has given you some good tips to be a successful houseplant grower and taking good care of your little babies in the home and that you enjoy them as they grow and they thrive. So thanks so much for stopping by my channel. I sure do appreciate all of you so much. In my next video, well, I guess I'll have a surprise for you very soon. <laughs> and uh, everyone take care and have a lovely week. This is Mary saying bye for now.